Thank you, Dr. Paula Ferrara, for talking to us today about international collaborations in academic surgery. Can you talk, tell the uh, audience a little bit about yourself first? Yes, um, thank you, Chris, for having me. Um, so my name is Paula Ferrara. I am um, a surgeon, trauma surgeon at um, Virginia Commonwealth University. I um, became interested in international surgery or global uh, surgery because um, I am not from here and uh, I had the opportunity during training to see um, to see the differences between the care that we provide for patients here in the United States and how uh, in other places with less resources um, care can uh, change and uh, so I, that's how that's how my interest is started. Um, so, so why why is international collaboration important? Well, um, so I'm going to tell you from my perspective. Sure. Um, I truly believe that every patient everywhere in the world deserves 100% uh, the best care available, and um, I think that should be independent of economical uh, status or social status and it should be independent of if the patient uh, can pay or cannot pay. Now, this is not a political propaganda, this is what I think. Um, and, um, and I believe that we should bring everybody to the same standards. I think we can learn from each other. Um, uh, often I feel that because of what I just said, we have to bring everybody to the same standards. In America, we think that we're going to go there and teach them what's the right way to do it. Sometimes that's not, that's not the right approach. Sometimes they have great systems that work with what they have. And sometimes, actually, I feel that we learn something from them. I think uh, they're, uh, for example, um, many advances in trauma, like the Bogota back, happen first in South America. And the only problem with that is everybody was using it, but nobody knew about it. It took for an American, I, Dr. Maddox and Dr. Feliciano, to actually go travel to uh, Colombia, learn what they were doing, and then start writing about it. The Bogota so bag you're referring to, right? It, yeah. This is just an yeah. example. Yeah. That gives the example of how we can um, collaborate, right? So uh, South American, or uh, I'm not sure if it's the same in other places of the world, um, they don't have time dedicated for research. They might not know how to sit down and write a paper. They don't know how to... Um, tell people what uh, what they're doing um, and uh, or, so make it known worldwide and then North American doctors are very good at writing and are very good at telling people what they're doing but sometimes uh, the cases and the, the, the system and um, and the fact that uh, we have all these protocols and and different ways of doing things um, prevents us from in, inventing new things and trying new things that uh, might be easier in other places. Sure. Um, I also feel that because of um, educa surgical education, how it's now that we don't have a mentor model anymore and there's hours restrictions, then there may be things that, that our residents and our fellows are not going to have exposure to that they might have exposure in other countries. Because they don't have the, uh, as many resources as we have, they can be uh, very inventive and they can find a way of helping the patient regardless of not having every, all the um, money and all the resources that we have here available. And I think uh, in, the, in the perfect world, you have somebody that has the capability of doing everything under any circumstances and then sitting down and writing about it and better the system, not only locally, but sharing that experience globally. That's mm -hmm. just my point of view, and I'm sure if you ask many other people that are involved in uh, global surgery, they might have a different opinion and why. Sure, sure. Yeah, what comes to mind for me is a friend who trained as a surgeon in Sweden, and because there is so little trauma there, they, they don't gain any trauma experience, and, and I think they had to do outsource their training for that to another country, I can't remember which, but I suspect, um, I suspect the patient populations and the resources that are available are very specific to different parts of the world. That is correct. I, I also feel that, <clears throat> so in order to educate, we must be heard, understood, 
and believed. And for that, you need to uh, be able to, uh, so research is a way of doing that, of getting that, of being able to be at least heard, maybe not, I'm, I'm not sure believed, but, but with time data will allow you to be believed, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Do you have some experience um, interacting with uh, the academic communities of Latin America? Yeah, so um, my father is a surgeon, and um, and uh, so for a long time, I, and he's a surgeon that also writes, which sometimes in Latin America is rare, because they don't have the resources, for example, to take a week off to do research, or they don't have, um, they, they're more measuring in the bottom line of what they make, and they're incredible, in some places they're incredibly busy, especially with trauma. So when, um, uh, when I was in Colombia, it, Cali, the place where I trained, was the third place in the world with the highest murder rate, which meant that we had a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of trauma. And at the time, um, and the Pen penetrating were trauma. Right? Penetrating yeah. trauma, mm -hmm. correct. So um, he was very busy, but he always find the time to write and to be academic, um, in spite of uh, you know the uh, setting at the university at the time. Um, so I saw that. Uh, you know, second hand for my dad. And then with time when I came, he was one of the founders of the Pan American Trauma Society. And with time when I came after I did my surgical residency and fellowship, I got involved with that society as a way of uh, giving back and finding a way of, um, uh, because I truly believe in their mission, the mission of we together can make the world a better place. We can, um, a, make sure that every patient, whatever they might be, can get the best care uh, possible and the best chance of surviving. This is just with trauma because that's what I do, but I'm sure it's different in any specialty. Yeah. So so tell me more about the Pan American uh, Trauma Association and the, uh, the there's a conference associated with it, yes? Correct. So the, the Pan American Trauma Society is a society that was funded about 25 years ago with the idea of uh, collaborating and trying to um, better uh, the training in the United States, trying to better the experience for people in Latin America, trying to better research overall and uh, through education and innovation, better patient care. Um, there's a conference that is given uh, every year, and every year we go from place to place. So we we um, we uh, had just had it last year in Chile. A couple of years ago was in Colombia. This year is in November in Panama, um, and I think it's a very nice conference. But it's not only the conference. I think it's the commitment uh, of uh, supporting. Um, the Americas through education. Um, there's courses that we give also in ultrasound, there's a trauma prevention course, there's um, there's kind of something uh, very similar to a basic trauma course that teaches the providers, any provider, not only physicians, how to take care of the patient with minimal resources. Um, so those type of courses that are given through the year, not necessarily only in the conference, but also mm -hmm. in the conference. Terrific, terrific. So what, what else do you, would you like to say to the world about uh, international collaboration and, or about the conference? Well, um, the, the conference is a great conference. I feel that, I don't know why, I think it's because uh, we're not, uh, we're taking outside of the regular setting where uh, trauma conferences sometimes can be a little uptight. This conference is a little bit more relaxed and allows for having a conversation or having a cup of coffee with mm -hmm. uh, with the doctor that write the writes the book in trauma mm -hmm. and um, and ask questions and trying to find out how because asking the, the questions over and over is what gets us to a, a feasible answer and uh, so I think I think it's a little bit more relaxed or so a lot more um, opportunity for collaboration so look more collegial then and uh, yes. pe people are approachable and that's great. That's great. And it's the same people. It's the same people that go to the, the, all the conferences. But I feel that they have to get out of the U.S. to uh, let their guard down a little bit. <laughs> Maybe. Right. And um, uh, and then uh, what do I? Uh, what else do I want to say about the, the Pan American? But more importantly, about collaborating in global surgeries that we need young people interested in uh, in in doing it. I think um, I think it needs to. It needs to not only not only in doing research and not only in traveling and just doing voluntary work, but we need more, we need kind of an army of young people to figure out how to 
um, what, do, do what, what's best for the patient. And then if that means um, making our training for surgeons better here in the United States and exposing them to better cases, if that means giving tools for uh, people in, uh, in uh, places with not that many resources in how to provide for better patient care, or giving tools how to actually understand research and understand how um, writing about the things that they're doing actually is not going to only benefit them but actually benefit uh, the world because they will be able to know what's happening and try it on their own um i i think and now with all these communications and the internet i think it's getting easier and easier and the world is getting smaller and uh, i think uh you know I, i i would hope that um i appreciate the opportunity to talking about it but i would hope like with that time we could create an army of people that see the world as uh, one a big community that um, and that is responsible is the responsibility of all all of us really to make sure that we can provide for we can give that patient that is in need the best chance of surviving. Excellent, excellent. You're very passionate about your mission. That's great. Mm-hmm. Great talking to you again, Dr. Ferrada, and uh, we hope thank to talk you. again soon. Okay, thank you, Chris. Thank you for everything. Bye bye. Have a good day. Thanks for checking out the Op Report. Help us keep conversations alive on topics in general surgery. Check out more episodes of The Op Report and other on-search content here at YouTube. Find us at Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And find our homepage at onsurge.com. Join the conversation and tell us what topics you'd like to hear about and what people you'd like to hear from.